Chad Bennett here, and in this video, we're going to go through preparing images for the web. And it's a process I do on a daily basis. And I thought I'd share with you my workflow for, you know, inserting images to blog posts, Facebook, anywhere. So this is something that happens all the time. And usually the first step to that, well, let me back up. We're going to be grabbing an image from Google Images. We're going to optimize it for the web with Photoshop and then we're going to automate this entire process. I'm going to show you how I've done that and it just saves tons of time and ensures you're getting the highest quality image for whatever you're using for and it's going to output multiple sizes and we can just grab what we want and dump the rest. So without further ado, let's dive into it. I'm going to do a, a search for stunning background. It's just random, okay? And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a really large image so you can see how this works. And let's go with, I don't know what, I don't like this one. This is a huge image. Pop this up, drag it to my desktop. I'm actually gonna put that image in a folder that I'm calling process images. So I'm going to drag it right into here. Okay. Now I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'm going to go through this. Well, first, let me show you uh, what, what can happen here. If I drag this into Photoshop, I can run this action. And now you see that I have all of these images. Okay, I got the number corresponds to, with the width of the image. And I've got JPEG and PNG versions of each width. These are all the common widths that I use and it scales the height proportionally. Okay, so I would just I'll come in here, I'd grab the image I need. Because there's no transparent background, I would just grab one of the JPEGs depending on what I'm using it for. And if I, open it with preview. Now the settings I've used, I'm going to go through those with you to show you the settings I'm using so that I'm getting the best image quality, but size is really, really important to me when it comes to um, putting images on a website, because if you put a giant image on a page, it slows down your speed, which slows down user experience, hurts your your search engine rankings and the list goes on and on. People just bounce right off your site. So let's dig in to Photoshop and I'm going to show you what I've done. By the way, this is Photoshop CC 2015. I kind of broke down and did the $10 subscription just to get Photoshop. I've been using Mac apps to do this stuff. There's lots of ways you can do it, but it's worth it. I really recommend you do this. So you can see here, I got a series of actions. 300, 500, 900, and 1200. Let's just collapse that action panel for now. We're going to create a new folder. I'm just going to give you the example. I'm going to call it example. Okay. Then under that, I'm going to create an action. I'm going to call this one 300 example. And then I'm going to hit record. Now I'm going to go through the steps of, of saving the images of what, what I would do manually right now. So I hit record. What I'm going to do is just go through the steps that I would normally do manually. So first thing I'm going to do is resize it. I go to, up to image in my mini bar, image size, change this to 300, hit OK. Then I'm going to do save as and make sure that this says dash 300, whatever. And I hit save. And I've got the quality all the way down to low for the web and stuff that I've seen that you really can't even tell the difference and it makes really small file sizes. As you can see here, it's only 29 kilobytes. The original file is 1.4 megabytes. So I hit okay. Then I'm gonna do save as again because sometimes I want JPEG, I mean uh, PNG files. I'm gonna change this to PNG at the bottom here. Let 
make sure it says 300, hit save. And then I use the compression, the smallest, because I want it small, and I hit OK. Then the next thing I need to do is, is basically undo this resize so it's ready for the next one. I do Command Option Z, and that's it for the 300 example. So I hit Stop. And now, if I come into Photoshop and I highlight this action and hit play, well, first of all, let me so you can see live what's happening to the files. If you watch the window down below as we do this, well, I'll just show you in a second. We hit play, it does its thing really quickly, and now you can see I have a 300 size JPEG and a PNG in that folder. That's all well and good. Now we just need more of the, we just replicate that, do the same thing again, but the only thing you would change is the uh, width dimension. So you get all of these actions ready to go. Then you create another action that's called run them all and you literally just hit record and you run them one by one. So now you have an action that runs all of these at one time. So I've deleted all the ones we just created and we got our original stunning landscape here. Let's run that action and see what happens. So I hit run them all and hit play. You can see now I have 300 JPEG, PNG, and so on, all of these to choose from. So it's really quick, but it's not automated enough for me yet. So what we're going to do is create what's called a droplet. We go up to File in Photoshop, go File, Automate, Create Droplet. We're going to choose uh, to just save this to the desktop for now. And the action is run them all. And you just leave everything else standard. Hit OK. And I have my image process droplet sitting right on my desktop. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the ones we just created and show you what happens. We're just going to literally drag a file right on that guy. Boom doing this thing. Done. But wouldn't it be cool if we could just right click on this and then choose to run that. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to open up Automator. We're going to choose a service. Choose. And at the top, we're going to change this to image files. We're going to go search for open over here and we're going to go down to open finder items. Just double click it. And in the default application, we're going to change that. We scroll all the way to the bottom and hit the other. And then we're going to go to our desktop over here and just choose that image process droplet. I'm going to save this. Now let's go back to Our file here, we right click on this, hit services, image process. And there we go. All done. That's very quick. Now, if you wanted to, see, I like to right click. That's probably what I'm going to stick with. You could actually have Hazel rules in folders, subfolders. I'll go into, into that into other videos, but this should get you started. It should automate your workflow a little bit. And the output is the best that I've seen for, for what I'm doing. I tweak it as I go. But um, it's producing great images that I can use in whatever application I need. And I simply grab the one I need, and then I just dump the rest. Hope you enjoyed this workflow video. We'll have tons of more advanced workflow videos inside our member area. So check us out online and we'll see you inside.